tonight I'm going to be throwing together a, a just kind of a crazy noisemaker project. The idea is uh, stretch this spring onto a board and then um, I've got this. It's a, it's a heat sink from an old Pentium 2. And if you, I don't know if you can hear, how good you can hear that. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the spring on there and then have this up by the headstock and mount a piezo element, which is, uh, you can find these in uh, handheld video games or old digital watches. They, these things, they, they make little beep beep noises for little kid games and stuff. You can get them from Radio Chef for like three bucks. But you can also find them in different uh, scrap electronics. And it also works as a pickup. Now this doesn't work off of uh, the idea behind an electromagnetic pickup or something you'd find in a guitar. That's by uh, uh, frequency waves or whatever you call it. This is just off of vibration. And they do use these in all sorts of instruments. But you have to, you have to mount it on the, in like the bridge of the guitar. That's where it's going to pick up all the vibration strongest. So the idea is we got the spring running. We got this little goofy thing at the top of the head, headstock with this piezo mounted underneath it. Hopefully that'll pick up enough of the vibration of the spring and everything. For today, probably just going to put in a housing for a jack so you could plug it into your guitar amp and mount this stuff up. So let's get busy. Now to keep this video a little shorter, I went ahead and cut and painted a lot of the pieces. As you can see here, I've got the headstock cut. I'm ready to mount that in. This little piezo pickup is going to go in here. I got to route a little spot for the wires to run side of the cable on. I'm going to be using a shielded cable, which is important so this thing doesn't hum. And then there's, this is my jack box. I've got a nice recessed quarter inch jack that's going to bolt up here, mount in here. And then I'll screw this in. And I've got this all cut out nice so I can go ahead and mount this panel back here. I'm going to hide the wire inside of here so it's kind of nice. And, uh, you know, I've got to go ahead and mount this and work forward because the next step is going to be figuring out how this is going to go on here. I've got the holes pre-drilled. I probably got to solder the cable on now and start working on how this okay. is going to run. Uh, what I did, uh, I cut a hole at an angle here and then the wire is going to run through there and drilled it out. And <clears throat> I used this shielded cable. That's pretty important so it doesn't hum. I put a little flux on here so I'm going to go ahead and solder up the connection for the piezo. Piezo? Pie I don't know, really know how you pronounce it. But usually what I do is I'll use that flux and then I got uh, rubbing alcohol in this. It's a head cleaner bottle. And then I clean it off a little bit because when you use the flux, it actually helps the solder to stick real well. But then the tape won't stick. And I'm not going to worry about taping this up real nice. It's going to be kind of bolted down in the housing as long as I don't get my fingerprints, the oil from my fingers all over the tape. It should stick pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and run this sucker through here and we'll get an idea of how it's going to mount up. I just got to figure something out to make sure that this sucker is going to be pressing on there and get the full benefit of the vibration. Okay, what I did, I just used some masking tape to, to connect the piezo onto the aluminum, the little thing, uh, the heat sink. So that's going to hold it on there like that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm warming up my hot glue gun. So I'm just going to dump some hot glue into the recess and then jam a thing on there and run the screws through it. In the meantime, while I'm waiting, I've got this piece here. And the idea behind that is it's going to keep my wire safe. I have a nice little track for the wire to sit keep it safe. I've got a few of these pieces here that I garbage picked from this cabinet company dumpster. And sometimes you find these really unique little pieces of wood that I find great, great uses for them. I'm going to go ahead and just do this kind of carefully because the screws are a little bit bigger than the track. I don't want to 
don't want to jam them in there too fast, otherwise I'll probably crack the wood. And I tried to center it, but... So we've got our cable caddy set up while the hot glue gun's warming up. Okay, I'm going to dump some hot glue in this reservoir here, just so a little bit more of the vibration will carry through the back. It's probably completely unnecessary, but it's also going to help to keep the piezo, piezo element secure. Now just a quick tip when using hot glue guns, I like to, I take a side cutter and I cut the hot glue sticks into pieces. Because when you're reloading, it gives you, then you're able to grab it with your thumb. It's a lot easier to get the glue going with a shorter piece rather than with a, th a full three or four inch piece of hot glue. I'm going to go ahead and try to get these in here without breaking any of the tines. Yeah, not working out too good. I'm probably going to have to... I did pre-drill these. Yeah, see, I'm bending the tines real bad. All right, I'm going to have to do the rest of this by hand. Okay, uh, the problem I ran into here was the head of the drywall screws I was using was, was the diameter was too big, so it was running into these tines. Bent them up a little bit, I just bent them back, and you know what, the pressure... I could take them out and put in some smaller uh, screws with smaller heads, but I'm not even going to bother with it. It's, it's fine. If I run into a problem with it down the line, which I know I won't, could always replace these screws with four different ones. So I'm just about wrapping it up. What I have left to do is uh, solder up the connection for the input and then just mount the final pieces and put the spring on and test it. But I'm just going to give you a tip here. If you notice this wire, uh, how it's sitting in this position right here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the jack. And because the wire is naturally, it's prone to lay in this position. And I find if you try to force the wire, you're fighting two different things. So I set my solder points up where they want to lay naturally so there's going to be no pressure pulling it, and it on it when you get the solders hot and when it's cooling. So chances are you're going to get a, it's going to be a little bit easier on you. See how it just moved on me there? That's what I'm talking about. If, if you start off when it's in a good, decent position, chances of it sticking and not moving at the last second are a lot less if it's already prone to be in that position. Okay, as I was wrapping it up here, uh, what I discovered was there was some hum, believe it or not. When I touched the aluminum on the heat, the heat sink, the, the tines, it was humming a little bit. So I, I ended up taking the headstock apart and uh, redoing those connections and taping them up. I don't know what it was. I didn't have to reverse the polarity, but the hum is gone. And while I was at it, I went ahead and took uh, these screws that didn't quite fit and ran, ran them around on the grinder, ground them down, and then I reinstalled it and put them in. So it's all nice. We didn't lose any of the tines, the little fingers, and I just bent them back to make them look nice. But you can hear now. Okay. So we got everything wired up. It's working great. Now uh, I've got this little tray to hold the cable. So I just cut some drinking straws. And what I'm going to do is every couple of inches, six inches or whatever, just put a little hot glue on that straw. I mean, the straw is just going to kind of protect the cable a little bit with the hot glue and make a little holder. Or maybe the cable can slide around if it wants to. So I wrapped it up for tonight. Uh, the future plans, probably going to extend this because I lost a little tension on the spring. Uh, maybe put a tension adjuster, like a screen handle, uh, whamola type of a deal on it. I don't know. Uh, and I want to put a humbucker in here and, with a switch so you could alternate between the piezo and the humbucker or both. But just a quick demo. Of Suspiria. I don't know. I don't know what you do with this thing. I just I found the spring, and then I noticed that the heat sink was putting out some noises. It reminded me of a, this song they were playing on the loop a lot. Take yourself to higher places. Every time I went into the John to take a dump, I turned the radio on and I'd hear this. 
and then da -da 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 -da, they would come in with the horrible grunge guitars and everything. And so there you go, the wrath of Khan, I guess I call it hacking with PD2. Thanks. See you next time.